Hi, this is Billy Bean here with a U.S. update. We'll begin with catastrophic storms in California, a stock market crash likely coming maybe this week, Texas Intel. A lot more governors are sending more troops to Texas. U.S. National Guard, 450,000 prepped to deploy. False prophet. Texas and Georgia, monkey farm, say it isn't so. And President Trump and dossier. Today's date, February 5, 2024, time about 1 p.m. Texas, episode 129. Some of my sources for this are God in the Bible, Patriot subscribers, Hal Turner, AOL, Canadian Prepper, New York Prepper, Daily Mail, News Nation, Stuen SD, Rolling Stone, Stork Dork, uh, Western Journal, State of the Union, Plus. So let's get started. We're going to begin first by drawing a map of Texas, uh, I mean of the U.S., and then I'll begin covering uh, what ha is going on in California, which is a historic storm. So that's going on. Now, some individuals are thinking that uh, it's possibly weather warfare but uh, what we've been getting from mine from around the world is that uh, as we have more impacts on the earth from space we're going to have stronger storms so that's what california is seeing and we know this storm is going from canada down to mexico and what california is seeing this morning uh, storm began last night into today and they had winds hurricane force winds 92 miles per hour which they've never had in their history we understand catastrophic flooding and so evacuations are taking place in los angeles santa barbara Ventura, that's how much ra rain they've got. Monterey, and we have power outages, so power out. At 7 a.m. this morning, there was about 430,000, including Santa Clara, Sacramento, San Mateo. So the power outage we understand, according to AccuWeather, is affecting 37 million people in California, or 94% of California's total population. And the rain has been coming down all in this area, 12 inches plus in the mountain areas, 6 to 8 to 10 inches in the cities. And I'm assuming that's what prompted the evac orders in Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Monterey. So we need to be in prayer for the people in California, too. And so we have this going on. First, I'll begin with some Patriot subscribers information. February 4. And Salinas Valley, California, we're receiving emergency weather alerts, high wind and rain. And a Facebook friend is talking about this morning in Sweeney, Texas. And that's along the Texas southern border. So we've got Texas somewhat shaped like this. So this... Uh, February 4, yesterday, I saw Apaches, and I saw that also this morning in the area where I am, further along the southern Texas coast. I saw three Apaches over Sweeney, Texas. So the people around here are getting, oh, 
uh, anxious somewhat. We're seeing all this military activity. Now, in Eagle Pass, Texas, we did have over the weekend uh, our great Governor Abbott welcoming in uh, many governors from other states. There was also uh, a huge convoy of truck trucks and cars that met uh, in Eagle Pass at a ranch about 20 to 30 miles away, but in this area. And we had uh, Ted Nugent and Sarah Palin were going to speak at the uh, trucker convoy. So that's going on. Okay, so now I have this from a Patriot subscriber who lives near Eagle Pass in Uvalde. We have family property and hunter cabins on our property we rent out. And we often find the illegals have broken in and left behind their prayer rugs, indicating that they are Muslims. And another Patriot subscriber uh, near Eagle Pass, Uvalde, we had a tornado last night, that was February 3. Rain took out my driveway for a second time in one week. Wow. You need to pray for this Patriot subscriber. Wow. I can imagine that. So we're having some strong weather issues too in this area. I have a Patriot subscriber who is from the 1st Armored Division at Fort Bliss. And we know that's at El Paso. And we know that Fort Bliss has sent tanks and uh, Bradley vehicles to the Texas border and stand ready to send more. I have a Patriot subscriber. 1798 Allen Sedition Act. And uh, it makes a perpetual union under Articles of Confederation. I have a Patriot subscriber. Nikki Haley received money in New Hampshire from dim donors. Yes, she did. And I understand uh, in New Hampshire at that primary, they had President Trump 50% plus, so he won the primary. And Nikki Haley at 43%. But oh, coming out information from Doug Hackman's uh, location is the fact, and I heard this from other sources, Nikki Haley's votes. In the New Hampshire primary, 72% came from Dems and Independents, who we believe were paid money to go and vote for Nikki. So she's not being supported by Republicans. And this uh, Patriot subscriber says, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, her in intel is, we'll wait until the trials are over for President Trump and uh, she'll stay as long as she has any hope of getting the nomination. I can say this to Nikki. The judges who are involved in those upcoming trials for President Trump may receive visits from the White Hats. After all, a court cannot legally just throw out the Constitution at any level of law, federal, state, or local, and not be guilty of wrongdoing. I have a Patriot subscriber. Daily, we have heavy chemtrails in New Orleans. And another Patriot subscriber, I pray for warrior angels too. Now we have this. Okay. So we've long heard that we would have a crash in our economic system before a new economic system comes in to take its place. Now, I know many are saying that Nasara Jasara is not uh, a viable economic system, but millions of others say, yes, it is. So what's expected before Nasara, Jasara, 
a new economic system comes in because we know the American people reject totally the deep state's plan for CBDC. In other words, a only a digital bank system where they control. You talk out against the government, we'll keep your money. You know it's <laughs> Okay. So we know that the stock market uh, has been predicted to crash. And this is coming out. This information comes from Hal Turner. So, on uh, uh, last Thursday, that would be February 1, the Federal Reserve, headed up by Jerome Powell, and he gave this public statement on uh, CBS that the current let debt level of the U.S. is unsustainable and that it's very likely in the next Fed Reserve meeting in March there will be no rate cut. Now, President Trump in his first term said when the U.S. debt reaches 19 billion, there's no coming back. And we know the current U.S. debt stands at 34 trillion. So we see President Trump in his first term, and we see the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell uh, making the same statement. The current debt level is unsustainable. And now this morning, uh, we have this news from China. And we know that many in the U.S. stock market are tied to the China stock market. Now, a few days ago, we had China. So last week, we, had, we found out about the liquidation of Evergrande. And Evergrande is tied to the U.S. stock market and many investors. So that happened last week. Now, this morning, February 5 in the a.m., the stock market in China collapsed, went down 8% in a matter of hours. Trading was stopped and 30% uh, loss uh, for their stock market uh, year to date. So they went down this morning 8% and this ad, uh, creates a Year to date, from January to February 5, a 30% loss in their stock market. And what they implemented this morning, so this abrupt loss uh, triggered Chinese derivatives uh, to be liquidated. They halted trading of 30% of all stocks. They also shut down Hong Kong uh, investors. And to some investors, they said, no, you cannot sell. To some funds, they said, no, you cannot sell. And to some funds, they cut their leveraged place. So it's anticipated this uh, abrupt drop in the value of the Chinese stock market will impact U.S. derivatives and the U.S. stock market. So we'll see how that goes. So that's going on. So this week we could see something like a crash in our stock market. And I know that the WebBot data from Cliff High predicted some catastrophic event uh, to happen in the U.S. by February 18. So we're seeing some catastrophic events going on. Now, what's going on in Texas? So this weekend we had the trucker convoy at Eagle Pass, Texas. 
We also had uh, Governor Abbott speaking, and we had 14 Republican governors stand uh, with the Governor Abbott at Eagle Pass, Texas over the weekend. And those governors are Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Georgia, Brian Kemp, Idaho, Brad Little, Indiana, Eric Holcomb, Iowa, Kim Reynolds, Louisiana, Jeff Landry, Mississippi, Tate Reeves, Missouri, Mike Parson, Montana, Greg Giaforte, Nebraska, Jim Pillen, New Hampshire, Chris Sununu, South Dakota, Christy Noam, Tennessee, Bill Lee, Utah, Spencer Cox. And we have this. At a news conference Sunday afternoon, Governor Abbott said, it's important to protect Americans against JB's reckless open border politics. And now we have this from U.S. Immigration. One half of the governors of the U.S. are united uh, to support uh, the right of states to self-defense against invasion. And more governors are sending troops. Uh, this would be Highway Patrol to Texas. So we have that going on. We have Idaho and we have Nebraska sending more highway patrol. So we have more boots on the ground on the border. And now we have this going on from Rolling Stone about the Texas border. The Dems urge JB to federalize the Texas National Guard. And on Sunday, at this meeting that took place, I've been, I was speaking of, South Dakota Governor Christy Noam said, the Democrats urge JB to come after states' rights. And if JB tries to federalize the Texas National Guard, this could lead to U.S. Civil War. Way to go, Governor Christy Noam of South Dakota. And from the Western Journal, uh, we have Mike Johnson, uh, Speaker of the U.S. Federal House, third in line to be president should something happen to JB and KH. Uh, had a Sunday morning uh, TV appearance with Maria Bartiromo. And Mike Johnson to JB, JB has the authority to act to secure the border. And we saw President Trump use that same uh, authority. JB is trying to say he doesn't have the authority. It has to come from Congress. But Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, third in line to be president, says publicly, JB does have the authority to close the border. Yeah. And Mike Johnson on the TV program with Maria Bartiromo made this public statement. I'm not sure JB is in charge. <laughs> A lot of American citizens would agree with that. Okay, from Stork Dork, uh, the U.S. border bill that's currently uh, being put forth in the U.S. federal uh, house, the Dems vote against, and it, the Dems who are voting against it are the Dems who are allied with Hispanic Caucus, and progressive caucus. So apparently some of the 
Democratic supporters are also against of this bill. And now we have this. So we're getting information about the U.S. National Guard, which numbers about 450,000. And they, we understand, have been given orders. They should be ready to deploy in 30 days. So that would be early March. So we see a concerted effort by the deep state controlled U.S. federal government to remove from the U.S. all U.S. military and our National Guard, leaving we the people to deal with an estimated 28 million who have come in over the past three years through the J.B. Dem uh, unconstitutional open border, 28 million believed to be CCP military and terrorists from around the world. Yeah, it looks like a plan for that to go forward. So yeah, that's going on. And now we have this from a group who are uh, U.S. military vets. So the group is U.S. vets, and they have a pack to support U.S. vets for Congress. And this group is Stuen SD. I'll list it for the description for you. It's from a substack. Combat Veterans for Congress pack. They expose a secret plan to bring down the population in the U.S. with illegals, which began three years ago when we saw the political coup in the U.S. January of 2021 and the J.B. actor put in place. And we have this that this is being organized and I had brought that out in a previous video also with information from Michael Yon about uh, the uh, CCP and terrorists coming in from the Darien Gap and that's near Panama and I brought out that Mayorkas had been seen down there and Mayorkas had formerly been on the board of directors of a an NGO funded by the U.S. government, secretly, called the Hebrew Emigration Aid Society, Mayorkas, before he took over as director of the uh, Homeland Security, had been on the board of directors of this group, who were also aiding and abetting CCP and terrorists coming in illegally to the U.S., but the secret plan that's being exposed uh, and documented is that the deep state, via the Dem JB regime, intends to take out all the U.S. military from the U.S. and then activate via the U.N., the CCP military, and the terrorists. And they are being coordinated uh, via the UN through uh, individuals formerly in place of a regime in the U.S. associated with JB. Remember O from Kenya? And this is coming out. Eric Prince, the CCO of Blackwater, a deep state globalist organization. Uh, is enabling uh, the Muslim Brotherhood who supports Hamas and, and this group influences JB. Well, it influences the deep state that's making the calls to the current U.S. federal government. And Iran and its military are uh, 
is coming across the border too. So this is being documented. We knew about the CCP. We knew about the terrorist. Now, part of this terrorist, according to this source, is Iranian military. And didn't we just see in the past few days what appeared to be a secret warning from the JB regime to Iran with regard to the US military attacks in Syria and Iraq and via that warning from the JB regime Iran evac their Iranian revolutionary guard from Syria and Iraq didn't we see that I put that out earlier this morning so now from this source comes part of these terrorists who are coming over includes the Iranian military crossing illegally over the southern border, thousands of them. And they have cells that can be activated, located in Los Angeles, New York City, D.C., and Miami. So that's going on. Yeah. So it's a good thing that the great governor in the state of Texas and 25 other great governors of other states are standing united because look, it's more and more information is coming out that yes, indeed, we have cells all across the U.S. ready to be activated. We see uh, an evil and corrupt U.S. federal government taking all of the U.S. military outside the U.S., leaving the American people vulnerable to this attack. I'm glad to know that God is in charge, and by God, there are millions of American citizens organized to take down any threat that might come internally. And I believe that if this should come to fruition, that's when we're going to see the normies, the people who get all their news from TV and actually believe it, when they wake up, that's when we're going to see gallows built in American streets and Western-style U.S. justice meted out to the evil and corrupt ones inside our gates. So that's going on. Now we'll talk about another move by evil and corrupt forces to destroy the people of America. I had put out several videos in this area, uh, this is in Brazoria County, Texas. We had seen an effort by, uh, by the Charles River facility to put in a monkey farm and lab to make bioweapons such as Ebola, poison the San Bernard River. And uh, so that's going on. And now we see this. So we have Florida. Right here we have Georgia. We've got this location, Bain Bridge, Georgia. It's right on the border with Florida has a river that runs through because we understand these mucky farms bio labs have to have a body of water near them I submitted to dump their waste and also for secret trips in and out now this Charles River facility that was trying to put a monkey farm monkey lab in Brazoria County had been charged with illegally bringing in wild monkeys 
from Cambodia. Uh, in the U.S., uh, monkey farms and monkey labs have to only deal with monkeys that are bred in captivity. So now it's coming out that this Charles River facility in Houston had indeed brought in these wild monkeys and they had used false papers. So this is coming out. So this uh, effort to open a monkey farm in Brazoria County, Texas, it's still ongoing, but I, I see recently the San Bernard River Association, made up of residents who live along the river, uh, put uh, a public uh, breakfast together and showed information and how to talk about this monkey farm. And uh, they also had some local uh, politicians there, representatives to the Texas House. So that's going on. They're fighting back. Just say no to a monkey farm, monkey lab in Brazoria County. And we see more information is coming out about their illegally bringing in the wild monkeys. Now, what are they doing in Bainbridge, Georgia? Well, I think they saw that their efforts to open a monkey farm, monkey lab in Brazoria County wasn't going well and that their name, Charles River Facility, their stocks were dropping with all this uh, negative publicity. So, for the people in Bainbridge, Georgia, they, I believe, paid off some people at the state and local level, and they made it secret. Okay, this didn't work. We're just not going to tell the people of Bainbridge, Georgia. Yeah. So this is 20 miles north of the Florida Panhandle. And they wanted to put in a monkey, <coughs> excuse me, breeding farm, 30,000 monkeys on 200 acres. And we see, <coughs> excuse me, China has stopped importing monkeys to the U.S. in 2020. And what they did, now the people in Bainbridge, Georgia, have learned about this secret attempt to do the same thing to us. Now, how are these connected? Okay. So, I think Charles River Facility said our name is, excuse me, getting too much negative publicity, so we won't use our name. Uh, we'll secretly uh, put this in, not tell the people. And so, Charles River Facility secretly created a new company called Safer Human Medicine. And what they did, Charles River, uh, yeah, has in, been investigated by the DOJ smuggling monkeys in from Cambodia and falsifying papers. So that's coming out. And so... They started a new company to put in this monkey lab, Safer Human Medicine. And they took one of their managers and made him the CEO. So we see another negative plank uh, for Charles River Facility still trying to secretly uh, do things uh, behind the facts of the people uh, in the areas where they want to put in these monkey farms, monkey bio labs designed to make things like Ebola. So yeah, that's going on. So Charles River, a new company, Safer Human Medicine, incorporated when? This month, February of 2024.
that's going on. And I got this to say to the people of Bainbridge, Georgia, just say no, rise up and go public with the information because the more public you are, the more negatively it impacts Charles River facility and this new company and their stock goes down. Then they will try another location. Now I've got this to put together for you. So I brought that out that they have to be located near water and I submitted that was to dump their waste which absolutely I believe is poisonous down the waterways and that would definitely uh, take the population of Texas and I submit into Florida down but oh remember uh, about six months ago, there was also a secret CCP biolab in California, which the U.S. military took down. But the governor, a Dem, declined to investigate. I submit to you, this is a concerted effort by the deep state to also come against the people of the U.S. and to poison the three most populous states, Texas, Florida, and California, one way or another. So, I say this to the people of Bainbridge, Georgia. Remain united and go public with your... Uh, not wanting a monkey bio lab because I guarantee you we're talking about <laughs> whipping up gain of function bio weapons like Ebola and now we have this so we have this uh, pseudo Christian group called Faithful America touted on the mainstream as being the voice of Christians in, in America. Shut up. This is a false group. And the reason I'm bringing this out is because God said to me, look into this group. And typically, I, okay. So now, this group is calling false prophets. Franklin Graham and also Speaker of the House, third in line to be President, Mike Johnson, and also Speaker of the House, Conservative, Jim Jordan. These are false prophets. Franklin Graham, Julie Green, also Lieutenant Governor of the State of Texas, Dan Patrick. Why are they saying these individuals are false prophets? It's because they do not support the LGB and so on social justice program and other social justice anti-Christian values so this group and where did they come from they actually came from uh, they were first in the uh, 2004, they were put together by the U.S. National Council of Churches. And I submit this. Anytime you see an organization that's national or international, it's good to uh, realize the 100% probability that this group has been infiltrated or is in control by the deep state. And then in 2008, they became part of an NGO, a group designed to put forth political ideology that's called social justice that supports this agenda. So, yeah. And now they are making all these statements. So, Mike Johnson and Franklin Graham and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick false prophets so yeah so 
And also in 2014, they took a position against the Archbishop Nuruk. Uh, I think he's in New Jersey because he also uh, espouses conservative values. And they claimed they had 22,000 signatures. But when it was investigated, it was only 483 signatures, no Catholics, and they had 100 pages that were blank. And recently they came out uh, against uh, some conservatives saying they had 22,000 signatures. Well, this is being negated by uh, Catholics in New Jersey who had investigated this group. And when I investigated this group, I could not locate a physical address for them and I went through multiple sites uh, for them. So no physical address is publicly put forward. So that's going on. And they say, oh, we can make any statement we want saying we have thousands of signatures against this or that and we don't put forth any public information about the people who signed the supposedly signed signed on so i say to you this name faithful america is a pseudo christian group organized by an ngo and we know the ngos are deep state and uh, so when you hear that name Faithful America, dismiss it as being a legitimate Christian group. So that's going on. And now we have this. So we have from State of the Union, there was a trial actually in London. And this had to do with the Russia, Russia, Russia dossier against President Trump in his first term. And apparently no one is disputing that the Dems paid for the dossier that was put together in England by Christopher Steele, paid for by the Democratic Party. Now, a judge, uh, Judge Orbis, uh, made a ruling in London and dismissed the case. This happened uh, early February and said the dossier was not meant to be public. Not uh, trying to say that it wasn't politically motivated by the U.S. political dim party to be used against President Trump. Yeah, so that's going on. So we see things are turning out, uh, I think, uh, based on the support of the American people. And uh, we know that President Trump is going to run in 2024. And according to Martin Armstrong's Socrates software, will win an historic landslide which is actually what he did in November of 2020. So, yeah. Okay, a short prayer. Father, armor us up. Let us discern the thoughts and plans of our enemies, domestic and foreign. And Father, we ask that you send us your war angels to be revengers against evil. And as we draw near to battle, cover us, compass us with your favor as a shield over us. And we say thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, who many call Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and he is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.